I spend the final days of the year in stillness, reflecting on my life, on the highs and lows, the blows and the miracles, and daydreaming of the future. Daydreaming is easy to do under a gentle giant. Standing at the threshold of a new year, I have no idea what awaits me. There is excitement and contentment. And when the hands strike midnight on New Year's Eve, I will take a deep breath and leap into the new year. With a heart full of gratitude for all that I have experienced and learnt and for all the people I have known. How will you celebrate the new year, Wonder Weavers? I'd love you to share in the description below. I hope you had a beautiful Christmas, Wonder Weavers, and thank you so much for your messages and well wishes. I had a quiet and lovely day here and enjoyed a little bit of rest and a bit of play too. Over the last couple of days, I have been making little items for both the dollhouse and the Enchanted Cottage. And this week I thought I might share with you how I made a rather quirky uh, looking woodland wall clock uh, using a button. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy uh, the adventure, little adventure, Wonder Weavers. Um, and I'm also curious. Um, so while I've been resting, I've been daydreaming and pondering what I would like to create in 2024. So what kinds of projects I'd like to undertake. And I'm curious, do you plan your bigger projects in advance? So for example, do you at the start of the year map out what you're going to do? Or do you follow a more intuitive process and just allow the projects to come to you throughout the year? I'd love you to share with us in the description box below. So let's make a mini wall clock. This week I've been enjoying sketching and making little items. I've been thinking in particular about what furniture I'd like to make for the Enchanted Cottage. And while looking through my art supplies, I found these wonderful buttons in the form of a rabbit. And immediately in my imagination, I could see myself turning one into a clock. I'm imagining that the clock could sit nicely on the body of the rabbit, so I'm measuring it to work out the maximum diameter of the clock's face. And following my measurements, it can be a maximum of one centimeter. So now I draw a one centimeter in diameter circle with my compass on the back of an art pad. I then cut the circle out with scissors I will use this circle as a template and also for the back of the clock's face.
I make sure that the circle fits nicely on the rabbit's body, trimming it when needed. I then place the template on an acetate sheet and with a sharpie, I trace its outline. In a similar fashion, I use a template to draw another circle, but this time in graphite on white cardstock. Next, I'm going to draw the numbers of the clock face. Now I want to leave as I'm planning to place this clock in the Enchanted Cottage. Instead of drawing the standard numbers 1 to 12 on the clock face, I decide to draw a series of symbols inspired by ancient number systems. In my imagination, these pretend numbers can only be read by the good folk. To help me position the numbers on the cardstock, I sketch 12 equidistant lines radiating from the centre. I then draw the tiny numbers around the edge of the clock face with a 0.1 water resistant ballpoint pen. I then rub out my guidelines and cut the circle out. While cutting the circle, I realise that I've drawn the numbers too close to the edge. So I repeat the steps again and cut out a second circle. This time, the positioning of the numbers is better. Next, I cut out the circle I drew on the acetate sheet. Then I mark the centre of all the circles and with a pin, I then create a small hole. I want my clock to have movable hands, so I thought I would try and make them using earring pins. I take two pins and I thread on each one a small gold seed bead. I glue the beads about five millimeters from the loop of the pin. Later once the glue is dry I trim them to size. Next I paint the edges of the back of the clock's face with gold acrylic paint. It's now time to assemble the clock. I first create a hook with fine beading wire. I thread it through the buttons, two holes, creating an upside down U. I then twist the two threads creating a loop. I make sure on the front side of the rabbit the wire is sitting flat and I trim away any excess wire. Next I put a nearing post through the second hole of the button. I then apply a little bit of glue to the back of the clock and through its central hole I gently push it onto the earring post, making sure it's sitting nice and flat on the rabbit's body. I repeat this step for the clock face and the acetate disc. The sheet will act as imitation glass 
and will help to protect the face. Next I apply a little bit of glue to the earring post and place the loops of the earring pins onto it. And then I glue onto the post a gold seed bead. My little clock hands move. As a final touch, I'm going to create a frame for the clock face. I cut a small length of beading wire. With my jewelry pliers, I manipulate the wire into a hoop. Once I'm happy with its size, I then glue it to the outer edges of the clock. The glue is set and I trim the earring post and make any final adjustments. And we're done Wonder Weavers. It's a cute and quirky clock for the cottage. Thank you for watching Wonder Weavers. Before I go, I want to wish you a happy new year. May 2024, shower you with many blessings and may it be a peaceful and prosperous year for you and your loved ones. Thank you again for all of your support. I can't wait to share my new creative adventures with you in 2024. Until next year, Wonder Weavers, take care, stay well, and don't forget to play. Adios. Ciao. Let's have a cover robin and watch some highlights from this year. What were your favourite moments, Robin? I wonder what we're going to create next year.